Okay, guys, welcome to another video here. Um, I don't know if my sister is going to be yelling and all that. She's uh, throwing a temp temper tantrum. But, uh, today's video is about unicorns in the Bible. Unicorns in the Bible? What? Yeah, well, multiple people know about the unicorns in the Bible, yes. Like, um, and what they actually are. And some people don't know what it is, and they mock the Bible, or they scoff at the Bible, or they leave the Bible thing. There's no such thing as a unicorn, so I'm not going to believe in the Bible because it is false. Well, I will show you that that is not the case. If you do believe in evolution or in any other type of religion, and the only reason why you left Christianity or you were not a Christian is because of stuff like unicorns being in the Bible... Then I'll assure you, uh, I'll assure you, I'll, I'll answer your question, and I would like you to become a Christian. Please watch the entire video until the end. I don't know how long this is going to be. But, uh, yeah, well, let's get on with the video. So, the thing about unicorns. What does the Webster's Dictionary 1828 have to say about unicorns? Unicorn. Noun. Latin. Unicornis. Unis. One of. One and. Corno. Horn. Corno horn. Is two horned. Uh, but down here. Definition number one. An animal with one horn. The. I zoned out. Monosaurus. Mon my I can't pronunciate it. Oh, I'm a bad. Uh. Okay, well, whatever. I'm horrible speller and reader. Oh, that's not a horrible reader. It's just hard to pronunciating things. This name is often applied to rhinoceroses. Now this, like I said, the animal with one horn. So any animal with one horn. So if it's a deer, not well, technically deers don't have horns. If it is a, uh, let's think of an animal that has a horn. Uh, a sh not a sheep, a ram with one horn, then it'll be a unicorn. But this often replies uh, applies to rhinoceroses. A sea unicorn is a fish. So now you got, um. Different definition here. So you have the one definition. Animals with one horn. So when the Bible talks about unicorns. It's either talking about an animal that has one horn. A rhinoceros. A sea unicorn, which is a fish. Um, you know, like a narwhal. A fowl, fossil unicorn, or fossil unicorns horn, a substance used in medicine. So, uh, unicorn, uh, okay, rhinoceroses horns are made out of keratin. A keratin is a thing we do need. Um, I'm not sure about medicine, uh, the actual uh, properties of keratin. I would have to do research on this, but that is not the purpose of the video. Uh, it, we're not we're not here to talk about keratin. Now, places that this would be found in the Bible, unicorn would be found in the Bible, would be in Job thirty nine eight twelve King James version. The range of the mountains is his pasture, and he searcheth after every green thing. Okay, this sounds kind of like a uh, rhinoceros. It eats green things. Yeah. Well, rhinoceros, rhinoceros live in many different areas, and there are many different types of rhinoceroses. I will talk more about the rhinoceros and rhino and different types of rhinos. 
um, and where they might live. Would the unicorn be willing to serve thee, or abide by thy crib? Guidest thou, bind the unicorn with it with his band in the pharaoh, or will his horror and valleys after thee? Wilt thou trust him, because his strength is great? Or wilt thou leave thy laborer to him? Wilt thou believe him, that he will bring home thy seed, and gather it into thy barn? Now, he was talking to Job at this point, as you can tell by the title. Now, this is when he was talking to Job after he cried out to the Lord. And if you know, he starts talking about a lot of things, like, Are you glad as thou you can't send lightnings? And he started talking about radio waves and a whole bunch of other stuff that Job was just confused about. And then he starts talking about rhinoceroses, rhinos and crap. But what I'm getting here, I I didn't really read into this. I didn't really study into this. So this is the first time me really reading it to, uh, yeah. I scanned it. I didn't really read it yet. I didn't exactly read it, the entire Job. But, uh, well, I'll trust him because of his strength. I think that he was talking to about the unicorn because, of course, how strong it is. And how dangerous it is that he fears him, but yet he doesn't trust him. And I think that this has to do with him and the trust of the Lord. I think that's what this is getting at. But I'm not here to talk about about this verse. Uh, I got many other verses to show you. But I cannot spell. There are many... <laughs> Machen is is what? I don't even. I I think autocorrect had to do something with that. I think autocorrect did that. I need to watch over there. But whatever. Uh, more Bible verses that have unicorns in it. You know, numbers. Whoa, okay. Okay. What? Okay. Oh. Numbers. Twenty three. God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, uh, he hath as the strength of a unicorn. Now, this is not the, I'm pretty sure this is not the entire uh, verse. God brought him forth out of Egypt, and he has the strength of a unicorn. He shall eat up the nation of his enemies, break their bones, and pierce through them, with his arrows. Deuteronomy. Whoa. Wait, 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 wait. Deuteronomy, his glory is like fursing of his bull rock, and the horns are like horns of unicorns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. And they are the ten thousand of Ephraim, and the ten thousand of, uh, I can't pronounce that, M Mazik, I, Mazik, I've heard this before, how, how people pronounce this before, but I'm bad at pron pronouncing things. If you guys have listened to my videos, then of course you would know that, um, but anyways, Ephraim has tens of thousands of men, while Mazik M Mazia, has thousands of men. And it says that the, his horn is like the horn of a unicorn. Now, rhinos, now there's rhinos with two horns, one big horn and one tiny horn, which in that case, Ephraim would be the big horn and M Mazik would be the small the small horn. I, I can't pronounce it. But, uh, sorry. But, Job 
39, 9. Uh, oh, yeah, already, we already read that. Psalms 22, 21. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn. He, he maketh them also to skip like a calf, Liban and Sirloin, like a young unicorn. Sirloin. But my horn shalt thou exalt the horn of a unicorn. I shall anoint, uh, anoint with fresh oil. I shall anoint with fresh oil. And the unicorns shall come with them, and the bulrocks with bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made of fat, with fatness. Each one of these talk about unicorns. Now, some of these might not make sense to you if you believe in evolution or another religion and don't really study this stuff right here. But, uh, since you... Okay, on. Now, you'd actually have to read the Bible to actually understand this. See, each, indivis each individual verse might not have full understanding without the reading the entire chapter. So, if you were to try to understand this, you'd actually have to read, you know, the verses after and before it, and, you know, so on and so forth. But we're not here to do Bible reading. I'm just showing you each one of these that have unicorn in it. And hopefully you guys caught on to it. And hopefully I don't get made fun of, of my pronunciating. But anyways, the types of unicorn rhinos. Well, this, oh, uh, this big one up here, it, move, oh my gosh, I hate this sometimes, but anyways, the big one up, up there at the top with the biggest horn, that one, uh, some people believe was the unicorn that, that God was talking to Job about, uh, was the unicorn God was talking to Job about. Because that one was one of the biggest unicorns out there. In fact, I think it's actually the biggest unicorn out there. That one has hair. And it would also be in colder climates, you know, more like mountain areas. And it eats green things. So that would make sense a little bit. And then, of course, there's the Indian rhino, which is also a unicorn, which is still alive. Um, now, unicorns... Will actually start uh, A lot of the unicorns are actually starting to go extinct. Uh, some of these are extinct, some of them are not, but there are plenty of unicorns out there, some are extinct. The rhinos was called, uh, was called many things because of their number of horns. They were called many stuff that had to do a uni, or, uh, like that, I can't, I forgot. Or a corner horn, yeah. Cor, ni horn, something like that. I, I, like I said, I'm bad at pronouncing things. Sorry, but they were called multiple things, and because of their horns, um, certain animals like. Uh, any, like, any animal that has one horn, like a narwhal, or if a sheep has one horn, or a goat has one horn, then it would be considered a unicorn. The unicorn that is talked in the Bible is not the mythical unicorn that I am going to talk to, that uh, talk to you guys about. Look at the new definition. That definitely would confuse people. Modern day definition of unicorn. A mythical animal typically represented as a horse with a single straight horn projecting from its forehead. A startup company valued at more billions of dollars, typically in the software or technology sector. A current addition 
uh, uh, wait, I gotta sneeze. <coughs> Sorry. Wait. <coughs> oh, well. So, this is the modern day definition of unicorn. Now, you can see how this would confuse people to believe that the unicorn in the Bible is the horse-like creature from Greek mythology. But Greek mythology is not real. There is no such thing as an actual unicorn. There is no proof of this modern-day definition of a unicorn. However, there is proof, you know, with the old, uh, older definition of unicorn, that there was unicorns. And the Bible, the King James Bible, and uh, the Masoretic Text, and the uh, Greek Septuagint, and John the Apostle, and, and uh, their uh, versions of the original, all was made back then when unicorn was a one horn animal. Okay? Now that totally changed. They changed the definition, and they shouldn't have. Why do they need to? They absolutely do not need to. Unicorn is a myth. This unicorn is a mythical creature, not actual. That is not what is in the Bible. So, what is unicorn? Well, really, an animal with one horn is a unicorn. So, if you see one horn ram, it is a unicorn. But the Bible talks about the one horn rhinoceros. Like I said, uh, I would think that it'd be the only thing that would really make sense, unless it is talking about a ram. But rams are not used for tilling. Rhinoceros, a big, bulky rhinoceros, would be more powerful than a ox. And an ox is more powerful than a horse. And when I say more powerful, I mean it has more pulling power. Um, horses have more lifting power, but oxes have more pulling power. And rhinoceroses would also have a lot of pulling power. Rhinoceros, um, rhinos and all that are really strong. Same thing with elephants, but I cannot imagine you trying to use an elephant. <laughs> but, uh, basically that's it. The unicorn is a Bible, is a one horn, uh, rhinoceros. Now, I want you guys to watch more of my videos, so uh, please subscribe and turn on the notifications, comment down below. If you guys have any other Bible questions you want me to answer, I might answer it. Now, I want you guys to be able to understand this now, and uh, hopefully this made sense to you, you know, uh, and hopefully that the soundtrack wasn't too messed up, and uh, I got bad mics, and i just doing this on my phone, so, well. Uh, Whoopie do, uh, but uh, I got. I'm gonna be trying to do more videos, answering Bible questions and stuff like that. One reason why I wanted the cap on this is because I hate when scoffers are like, "Oh, you guys believe in unicorns? You guys believe in unicorns? You guys are dumb. You guys believe in unicorns?" Like, no, we don't believe in unicorns as you think we believe in unicorns. We believe in unicorns that are real. See, everything in the Bible is real. And if you do not believe that everything in the Bible is real, then you are deeply mistaken. Now, there is... There is no really big errors in the Bible. There's controversy on that subject. A lot whether Shem decided to... Uh, and not Shem, but the people that made the Masoretic text decided to change uh, Shem's children's... Uh, Years or not, that doesn't really matter. The truth is still the truth. Jesus still died on the cross for our sins. Jesus did re resurrect. The, all the people in the Bible were in real life. All the stuff that happened in the Bible happened in real life. The flood happened. There's proof of liquefaction and hydrologic sorting because of the flood. It, I ha if you guys actually do want more information on stuff like that, like the flood not, I have a video called Dead the Colorado River make the flood, or the Grand Canyon did. It's not exactly on making the entire world, but it does have, like, I did add information on 
it on how it is actually seen all over the world, not only at Grand Canyon. Now, I have an older version, which is just a black screen, and I have a newer version, which has the presentation type look. The newer version, I think, is a lot better. The younger, the other version was when I was a younger kid. Now I'm a teenager. At that time, I was a kid, but now I'm a teenager and older. So, uh... And I'm in school, so that's one reason why it's harder for me to be able to do stuff. I got a lot of chores. I mean, I just got done mowing and taking care of stuff. But uh, I got to go cook dinner soon. Whoopee. Uh, that, that, that's what I'm saying. I got I got a lot of work to do, schoolwork and all that. It's trying to catch up with me. And I'm going to be trying to do more videos. But I'm going to be trying to do... A, I want to do too much things in too little time. And these videos, I want to actually try to make high quality. But I don't have all the money. My family, it, we ain't the richest family. It's not like I live in luxury or anything like that. Uh, but I'm trying to do stuff for the Lord. And I'm actually trying to answer your guys' questions. So if you guys have any questions for me that um, I might answer... Please feel free to ask me, even if it is a stupid question, or something that might be uh, really easy to answer, or it is something you know, but want other people to know. You know, like, maybe, um, maybe the David Goliath story, maybe individual stories, or martyrs, or more on the topic of Jesus, you know, something like that, um. You know, maybe, 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 uh, comment down below on that, and, um, yeah. And one reason why I just really wanted to recap on this, because uh, there's too many confused people out there. And so many people think that, uh, there's, there's contradictions in the Bible. And there really isn't. There, I don't see any problems with the Bible whatsoever. Ugh. Um real big problems, there, there is none. Uh, at the end of the day, the truth is in the Bible. If you truly understand what the words are telling, uh, the words are telling you, then you will truly understand God more than, than, uh, than, uh, you would before. Definitely. Uh, reading the Bible, I want you guys to study your Bible. I want I want to be able to study my Bible more as well. But I ask you guys to study your Bible, and if you are a evolutionist or evangelist, and you actually do want to get saved, I have a video how to get saved. Please, uh, I ask you to watch that and know that Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Um, I do not want to push anybody away, and I do not want to be too much of an ignorant person. And surely I do not want to be scoffed at. That really makes me mad. <laughs> but whatever happens, happens. But uh, I want you guys to become faithful Christians. And I want you guys to understand the word. And understand that there is no problems with the word. And that unicorns do not only mean a mythical creature that's a horse life figure. With a, with a horn, okay? Uh, but, uh, basically that is it. Subscribe, turn on notifications, all that crap. Good stuff, yeah. And do all that, oh wait, all that good stuff there. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.